a fun raft with those guys. They're taking off, I'm taking off as well. They're going to, I don't know, soggy dollar, drink some painkillers. I'm going to St. Martin. It's going to be a long bit, but we'll, we'll make it work. I will see. And now, taking off the raft and the sail. Let's go. So I just did the last tack to get on the windward side of the BVI's and yeah now it's going to be one long bit like this and when the wind will start to uh, head I'll, I'll tack but yeah it's gonna be a good 24 hours minimum upwind and it's gonna be painful. So wait a bit, this footage is from uh, six years ago. One could say that it took bloody long to edit this footage. Yes, I did, but let me fill you in on, you know, what happened in between. About 10 years ago, uh, I discovered cruising in the sailing association uh, of my university in Montpellier. Uh, and soon enough, I was buying a small uh, sailing boat for myself. Actually, I didn't bought it, I exchanged it for a can of beer. And there is a vlog about this, I'll put the link to the episode somewhere here, in the corner. I started fixing uh, my boat while living on it and being to university, and I also started taking some um, charter boats, uh, jobs, even not getting paid, um, here and there during my holiday time. Once I finished my master's, I started working abroad uh, for the UN, and my goal was to, you know, get some uh, money aside to fix my boat and uh, cross the Atlantic. So I got my boat on the hard in order to reduce expenses while I was working, and in 2015, I had almost enough money and time to start working on my boat. But two weeks before flying home, I had a motorbike accident. And I had to do a six month recovery program. So I spent 2016 making money again. Finally, in 2017, I decided to take a year off from the office in order to do a full refit of my boat and cross the Atlantic. And so I did, and that's when I started to video the whole adventure. All the vlogs are available online, but I completely refitted my small boat on Ali, which is an écume de mer, during a bit more than six months. And then I sailed from France to the Baleares, getting caught in a storm on the way with two friends. There, I finally got a proper sailing degree, my RYA Yachtmaster Offshore, in order to be able to work for charter companies in the Caribbean. Then I started sailing single-handed, from Baleares to Gibraltar first. Then I tried to go to Madeira, but a storm decided otherwise, and I ended up landing in Canary Islands. I was planning to spend two weeks there, to then go to Cape Verde. Instead, I spent two months sailing the many Canary Islands and making great friends on the way. <laughs> My dad, who had helped me a lot to refit the boat, joined me in Las Palmas, and together we crossed the pond. It took us 31 days. Yeah, I know, it's pretty slow. Once on the other side, I started exploring the Caribbean. But having arrived in March, it was hurricane season soon. So I tucked the boat in a hurricane hole to go back to Europe and work as a flotilla skipper. And also started getting a foot into a side of sailing unknown for me, but very appealing, racing. I sailed on some legendary boats towards the end of my med season to get experience and network in that new sector. Check out the full vlogs about this. After the summer and uh, autumn in Europe, Back to the Caribbean I was. I recommissioned the boat to find a broken sailor in the head. But it didn't stop the adventure. I kept sailing for the whole season with no engine. But eventually, I got hired to go race around the world. My stepping stone as an offshore racing skipper. That's vlog number 90 and onwards.
If you've been following this channel for a while, uh, you know that I take forever editing. But you also know that the timeline is correct. So this episode is now the filling gap in between uh, my cruising life at the beginning and the start of my racing years. Next vlog will be number 195 and I still have a few nice sails uh, on my hard drive to edit. Like sailing with Ryan on a class 40, with Judy on a mini 650 or kite surfing in the Caribbean with Jose. But until then, here is all of the footage left from the Anali time. Hope you enjoy. Maybe I arrive tomorrow afternoon or in the beginning of the night. Will be long anyway, we'll see. Swell is starting to build now, so it's a bit more tricky. Um, the boat gets stopped in the big swell. It doesn't have, it's not heavy enough to really punch through the wave. But I'm still doing my four knots average, 3.5, four knots. Does the job, I'm just cook something nice, try to fish and go with the wind. Great day on the water. Ah, it's not going to last long. Just a bit of rain, it's good to rinse the boat. And after sun again, I hope. Blue sky over there. This is my sun protection. I have leggings, I have long sleeves, so I'm not burning during the day. I just put like sunscreen on my face. I don't like sunscreen, so this is just perfect. Yeah, a bit of music for sunset, enjoying the, enjoying the day. And I hope the night will stay like this. It's pretty smooth, not too wet in the, in the cockpit, so it's perfect. A few moments later. So the forecast really went down right now. There is like maybe five to eight knots of wind, barely five. <sighs> Hopefully it's not like this for too long. Just it's a nice night, lots of stars and stuff. Just not going in the right direction. But c'est la vie. Lots of lots of ferries and um, and like cargo ships around. Ooh. Okay, quite a good night overall. Just a little bit like too little wind, so. I haven't been able to sleep much because I was constantly like resetting the other pilot because in really light wind it kind of loses it. But yeah, nothing too bad. Now just a light light wind now that is a bit better. Hope it stayed like this. I can sleep in the morning which is the nicest. So during the hottest part of the day, I just hide in here because there is not much wind today and, uh, and the sun is boiling outside, there is no place to hide. So I'm kind of here, the fan over there is doing its best job to cool the place down a little bit. Just at my book, checking outside once in a while, but there is literally no one outside, so pretty nice. Waiting a bit, around 3, 4 o'clock it gets better and I can go out again and read. So with the breeze, but now not possible. The wind really died down, so I'm going to put on the spinnaker. I'm not going anywhere now. Going around at like one knot. Maybe the spinnaker will help a little bit to cover more ground. Finger crossed. All 
All right, so even with the spinnaker, when there is no wind, there is not much to do. I'm trying to fish also, but there's lots of sargas around. So the rod is always dirty, full of stupid seaweed. This is hard for the nerves. So warm when there is no wind. yesterday night from BVI and today is 1st of April and I have 15 days to have sold my boat and be in a plane going back to Europe to make it in time to the training starting of the clipper race at the end of April so I have so far no like strong uh, buyers for the boat no one is like really interested and told me yeah i'm taking the boat so i don't really know what to do um it's a bit of a rush i'm going now to go on shore um try to print some uh, flyers and just stick them everywhere i can and see what happens but yeah it's a bit of stress let's see how it goes So today is laundry day, I'm quite happy I managed to do one laundry every three weeks and that's cool, I spend like 15, 20 dollars depending on the country every three weeks for laundry, that's a pretty good, um, pretty good deal, pretty good average and also since I'm trying to sell the boat I'm going to take the opportunity to be in the laundry where lots of sailors are coming to put one of my hats somewhere. So now that I'm done with, I mean laundry is processing, I'm going to go and just stick more stickers everywhere for the selling of my boat. Fingers crossed. Boom, ship chandler done. Now I'm going to go and try the, the shipyard over there.
no one is in this shipyard but I left the flyer on the door with a note so maybe it works let's see next stop petrol station for boat And of course it's Saturday, 3.30, so everything has started to close down. So I'll have to wait till Monday for this. Alright, so today is Sunday, which means I cannot do anything here. So I'm going to go to Sandbot, so tomorrow I can put flyers in Sandbot, it's Monday. And maybe after I come back here, maybe stay two days there. There is really, really little wind today, so I'm really not sure I'm going to make it to Sandbot, but there's plenty of options along the way to stop, which are pretty nice. So I might do it half today, half tomorrow. I'll see how the wind is. Yeah, let's go sailing. really slowly because there is no wind and look there's a cat over there in the boom Minu. see the little head over the boom just chilling there look at this boat it's huge looks like a giant hobby cat must be so fast Such a nice passage, perfect wind, 15 knots, up wind but not too bad, not too much, the swell is nice, so that's perfect, look at this. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna miss this boat so much. Anyway, this has to be done. Send boat over there. After sunset, it's okay. Not gonna believe it. I was right there looking at the sea and I see a massive whale just jumping and <sighs> insane only once though I'm still looking just in case it happens it was over there so crazy like you see in the movies like <sighs> it's over I keep looking just in case it's pretty cool though maybe they're following me I'm gonna put this song again. I'm just arriving in San Paul and I'm going to turn off the lights yeah, so you guys can see maybe a little bit of light but it's so supernatural. There is so many yachts here. I'm so tiny in the middle and there is only a few things I like more than talking at night in the middle of like billionaire yacht but yeah it's pretty fun it's like these huge dinghies like power boats blasting around me but yeah whatever i'm gonna tag my way into the elbow i don't know if you guys can see see all the lights over there it's only like massive boats anyway we're in the same place in the end <laughs> 